What's going on guys, this Encoder here. Now, a couple of weeks ago I asked you guys to ask me a couple of ruling questions in the comments of my previous Answering Your Ruling Questions video. And honestly, you guys really delivered. I got almost 500 comments on that video. So I went through them, picked out a couple of ruling questions that I thought were really interesting. And we're gonna look at those together and answer them for you guys so that you guys get more educated on what these rulings are and how those, these different card interactions work. Don't forget, if you wanna take part in this series, just ask your ruling questions in the comments below. I will be going through them for my next next answering your ruling questions video. I'll be going through those comments to see what rulings I find interesting and I'll pick out those that I like the most. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Before we get started, I just wanted to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by YGOLegacy.com. They sell all sorts of Yu-Gi-Oh singles and will surely have what you're looking for. Don't forget to use promo code CODER5 at checkout for 5% kickback in the form of store credit once you complete a purchase. So, for our very first ruling question, we have Mothman Media asking, If a player A controls Eternal Soul and two Dark Magicians, and player B activates There Can Be Only One, what happens? So, in this situation, Eternal Soul is making both Dark Magicians unaffected by card effects. However, cards like There Can Be Only One, Goes and Match, and Rivalry don't affect the monsters. They make the player commit to an action of sending monsters to their field, from their field to the graveyards, so that they control only legal monsters that goes in a rival where there can be only one allows them to control. So in this situation, one of the two Dark Magicians will still have to be sent to the graveyard. Now, alternatively, if it was uh, two Shadal Dragons, for example, that have an effect when sent from the field to the graveyard, well, when sent to the graveyard in general by a card effect, they won't trigger when sent because of a card like there can be only one, because like I said, it doesn't affect the monster, it's an action being performed by the player, not specifically a card effect sending the monster. Now our second question that we have here comes from Alien Gamer and they ask if a trap monster like Crusadia Crawler is on the field and my opponent activates the effect of Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, will the trap card reset itself in the spell trap zone since it's still treated as a trap? And if it does, can it be activated in the same turn? So there are two sorts of trap monsters in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! You have those that are still considered as traps and those that are not considered as traps. So the, the basically the more known ones are going to be the Paleozoic monsters. Those are not considered trap cards as opposed to say Shadal Core, which is still considered as a trap card. So in the case of say Shadal Core, if it's on the field, it's both a monster and a trap card. If you activate Book of Moon on Shadal Core, it'll reset itself in the spell trap zone. And because traps can't be activated to turn their set, it won't be able to activate that turn. However, a Paleozoic monster, because it's not still treated as a trap card, it's only a monster, it'll be set in the monster zone like any other monster would. Okay, for our next question, we have Scully Joker asking, during the first turn of the duel, can you activate effects before the starting player's first main phase one? So, there's this common misconception that if you are the first player to take a turn in the duel, you shouldn't get a draw phase or a standby phase, specifically because you don't draw, but that's incorrect. So, even on turn one, if you are a turn player and you are the first turn player to take a turn in the duel, you still have both a draw phase and a standby phase, even though you don't have a draw for a turn on turn one. So yes, effects can still be activated during the draw phase or the standby phase of whichever player is going first in the first turn of the duel. Okay, so this next question is asked to us by BLD Run, and they ask, Called by the Grave versus Photon Orbital. Orbital is equipped to a Galaxy Photon Monster. I activate Orbital Effect, and the opponent banishes the Orbital with Called by the Grave to negate the search effect of Orbital. Does the effect of Orbital resolve or not? So, in this situation, a Photon Orbital has the effect where it can equip itself as an equip spell to a Photon or Galaxy Monster. Now, it can also send itself as an equip spell to the graveyard in order to net you a search. Uh, if Called by the Grave is chained to this effect of Photon Orbital, the effect of Photon Orbital will still resolve successfully it won't be negated by Call by the Grave, specifically because it's a spell effect and not a monster effect. Because Photon Orbital was an equipped spell card, the effect being activated was an activated effect of a spell card. Now Call by the Grave only negates monster effects, so because this effect is specifically of a spell card, a Photon Orbital as a spell card and not as a monster, Call by the Grave will not be able to negate this effect of Photon Orbital. Okay, this next question comes by Crystal YGO, and they ask, Card of Demise versus Ash. I still don't get it. You can Ash Demise and I can still activate another? I never understood that. So uh, this is incorrect. Uh, first of all, you cannot activate a second card of Demise if your first card of Demise gets met with Ash Blossom. Now, the specification that you need to know here is that uh, card of Demise lists that you can only activate card of Demise once per turn. So if, say, Ash Blossom is chained to card of Demise, Ash Blossom doesn't negate the activation of card of Demise, it only negates the effect. So for that reason, you 
won't be able to activate a second card of demise. Now, alternatively, if say a card of demise was negated by solemn judgment, solemn judgment specifically negates the activation of card of demise. Now, if a card that lists that it can only be activated once per turn, you will be able to activate a second one if the activation has been negated. Um, say your card said you can only use uh, once per turn, so like most monster effects will say you can only use this effect of X monster once per turn. If the activation of an you can only use effect once per turn is negated, you still cannot attempt to activate another. But because Card of Demise says you can only activate Card of Demise once per turn, if the activation is negated by say Judgment, you would be able to activate a second copy. But if the effect is negated by Ash Blossom, you won't be able to activate another. So this next question comes to us by Joseph and they ask, silly question. Gravity Controller lists as its material a non-link monster in an extra monster zone. Does that mean I can use an opponent's monster as material as well? So in this situation, no, you cannot use an opponent's monster that's in the extra monster zone for uh, the summoning requirement for Gravity Controller. Now, uh, anytime a link monster lists specific monsters in its material or stuff like that or any sort of extra deck monster, unless it specifically lists that you can use monsters from either field, such as Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon as a good example, uh, if it doesn't list that you can use either side of the field, then you cannot use your opponent's monsters. I mean, it would be a little ridiculous if you could just use two of your opponent's monsters to summon a Nightmare Phoenix on your field, right? So for this situation, though, you cannot use your opponent's monster in the AMZ for the summon of gravity controller. Okay, this next question comes by some dude and they ask, Altergeist Silquidus versus Evenly Matched. Just saw a post where people are saying bouncing multi-faker to bounce evenly is an illegal move. So when it comes to cards like Evenly Matched or any sort of normal trap card, quick play spell or normal spell, these types of cards are designated to be going from the field to the graveyard after the chain resolves. So if a normal trap card, a quick play spell, or a normal spell is activated, they're designated to be going to the graveyard, therefore they are not legal targets for effects that would either return them from the field to the hand or return them from the field into the deck. So if you have a card like Evenly Mash that is activated, yes you can still target it with say Mystical Space Typhoon or Cosmic Cyclone to destroy or banish it, those are legal actions, but effects that would or return it to the hand or return it to the deck cannot target evenly matched because the card is already designated to be going from the field to the graveyard after the chain has resolved. So if it's a normal spell card, a quick play spell card, or a normal trap card that are not meant to stay on the field after they resolve, they cannot be targeted by an effect that would return them from field to hand or return them from field into the deck. This applies to all normal trap cards, normal spell cards, and quick play spell cards that don't have an effect that would make them remain on the field after they've resolved. Okay, this next question comes to us by Casey French and they ask, So I have a question about an interaction between Boral Sword and Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Super Dora. I detach and target itself to make the card unaffected by card effects except its own and resolved. They summoned Boral Sword and attacked into my Dora. Does Boral Sword gain the attack and if so, then why? Okay. So when it comes to Boral Sword Dragon versus an unaffected monster, Boral Sword Dragon's effect specifically lists that it gains the attack, half of whatever the monster it's battling as attack is, so Boral Sword will gain half that monster's attack and then would reduce their attack by half. So in a situation like this, Boral Sword Dragon will do as much as it can, it will gain the half the attack of the monster it's battling, and then will attempt to reduce the opponent's monster's attack by half, so it'll successfully gain the attack but it won't successfully have the attack of the opponent's monster. So the Boral Sword will still gain attack, but the superior Dora that is unaffected by card effects will not lose any attack. So in that situation, Boral Sword Dragon will still have enough attack points to beat over the Dora. However, you won't be doing 3000 damage as the Dora has not lost any attack points in this situation. So anyways guys, that was it for this answering your ruling questions video. I hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, as per usual, if you want to take part in this series, you can ask your ruling questions in the comment section of this video. If not, leave a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. So anyways guys, have a good one and I hope to see you all very, very soon. Peace out y'all. Bye.